Recently, I saw a TED talk. Uh, these are talks on, on YouTube from different, all sorts of different kind of smart people or different uh, experts in certain areas. And uh, it was a, a TED talk given by a supermodel, interestingly, uh, Cameron Russell, if I remember correctly. And she spoke about what it was like, what it's like to be a supermodel, right? And uh, she takes the, 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 the top kind of four or five questions that she's normally asked and answers them fairly honestly. And it's very, very interesting to hear what she says. Kind of like a lot of these uh, dreams that young girls or young fellas might have, you know, these, these uh, dream career or like the dream for my life, my goodness, walking down a catwalk, having everyone look at me, having all the photographers going ballistic when I step out, you know what I mean? All that kind of thing. Uh, it just sounds, sounds amazing. So she describes what it's like and um, she really bursts the bubble, actually. She really bursts the bubble. Uh, she, said, she says how, she describes very clearly how, how image is powerful. It is powerful. I mean, if you, if you look good, cer certain things will, will definitely be easier for you uh, as regards finding a job, as regards uh, getting out of trouble. She describes once how she ran a red light. Completely, she was completely in the wrong. And uh, she got pulled over by the cops. And the guy looks in and goes, oh, she'll just, just take it easy next time, would you? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> kind of thing, you know? So she's, look, she's, so she just... She describes how in real life these, these things make a difference. But she says that so image is powerful, but she, she adds immediately image is superficial. It's superficial though. And she said like, it's something that was kind of given to me. She said, I don't, you know, I'm just, I can't help. I can't make myself any taller or smaller. Or I can't make my legs any longer or shorter. They are the way they are. This was stuff that was given to me. It's a, a lottery, this genetic lottery, lottery. Some are gonna be, you know, you'll take the, blonde hair from your mom and the blue eyes from your dad and who knows what, boom, there you are. Um, but there's nothing you can do about it so much. And this is just the way I look and it helps sell clothes. And she, the way she, she, she describes it uh, is very, very frank. But then at the end, she said, people often ask, you know, is it, is, it, is, it, is it hard to be a model? Is it hard to be a supermodel? And she said, very frankly, it's not what people think. We wake up every day worried about how we look. And we live in fear of, of how we appear. Because now we have a certain standard set. Now we have to look good. I have to wear certain clothes or I can't wear the same clothes twice. I mean, there's a certain standard now set for me. So I, we're the most self-conscious of our appearance. It was, just, it was very interesting to hear. Often we can misunderstand uh, the beauty of certain things and the challenge of certain things. And I think when it comes to our faith, we can really misunderstand the beauty of Catholicism and the challenge of it. And these things, they, they need to go together. We've said this a million times, like, but uh, any, in, to excel in any field, be it, be it intellectual or athletic, is going to take sacrifice. You know, to, to excel in anything, well, to, music, it's going to take sacrifice. You have to practice. You put in the hard hours, and when no one is looking, you're there practicing your scales or you're practicing your weights or whatever, dan your dance steps, whatever it may be. When no one is looking, you're putting in all the hard slog. Uh, but then, God willing, when you get the chance and there's some sort of a performance or competition and you win, it's worth it. But no one saw all the hard work, all the blood, sweat, and tears that went in behind the scenes. And when it comes to our faith, our faith is the greatest treasure. It is the greatest treasure that any of us could have, and it's the greatest thing that any of us could give to the next generation, bar none. There is nothing more important, and there is nothing greater than passing on the faith. Uh, saints uh, Timothy and Titus, the, the saints of today, were collaborators with St. Paul. Saint, Saint Timothy became Bishop of Ephesus and was martyred there within the first century, about the year 97 in or around. Uh, St. Titus uh, became uh, Bishop of Crete. So th these, these were men who, who knew Paul, walked with him. And at the time, the church was very small. The church was very, uh, I wouldn't say unorganized, but didn't have all the structures that we have now. There weren't you know, various churches and dioceses in the whole place set up like we have now. It was all very new. But what they did have was a profound love for Jesus, a profound love for the Lord. The point I want to make today is that Catholicism, our faith, Catholicism is important because love is important, 
right? Catholicism is important because love is important. Catholicism, our faith, our Catholic faith, teaches us what love is, okay? You take Catholicism, you take Christianity out of history, okay? Then how do we know God is, 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 is good? Then the, the cross never happened. Uh, redemption never happened. Confession was never available. The Eucharist never existed, okay? So our understanding of, of goodness, our understanding of human rights, our understanding of the dignity of each person completely changes without Christianity. Our faith, Christianity, Catholicity, the Catholic faith is important because love is important. Love is important because if we misunderstand love, we also misunderstand God. Like our understanding of the dignity of every human life, from conception until natural death. So our understanding of, of the, the, the importance of, of every little child, whatever color they are, whatever way they were conceived, every little, every little life, every little child is valuable. That, that's, that's Christian, that's, that's our Catholic faith. Okay, so these, uh, ca the Catholic faith is important because love is important. You take the Catholic faith out and we begin to misunderstand love. We begin to misunderstand love, we begin to misunderstand God. We begin to misunderstand God, we risk heaven. So there, there are real consequences. When, when we think about the world that we find ourselves in, the world which is uh, lonely for a lot of people, not just because of COVID. I mean, I, I know a lot of students who have hundreds of friends on Facebook and all sorts of social media outlets and ways of communicating superficially with people, but no way of actually communicating on a one-to-one, heart-to-heart -one, -heart kind of a level. People who are actually in the prime of their lives and miserable, lonely. So it's, it's not so easy out there. Now, if I fail to give them the faith, they're missing the greatest resource, the greatest treasure that they could have. And a made-up faith can't help them. A made-up faith can't save them. So if I tell them, look, mindfulness will help you, it will not. It won't. You can tell them that you make up an imaginary friend. Let's call him Bilbo, right? And Bilbo will always be with you and Bilbo will get you through the difficult times. No, he actually won't, because Bilbo doesn't exist. Bilbo can't help you, because Bilbo doesn't exist, right? So, any of these made up fates, any of these made up ideas, any of these like kind of mindfulness rubbish, like it's all made up, that can't help you. And the consequence of that is, if I'm in fifth year or sixth year, and I'm suffering from tendencies towards self-harm or suicide, mindfulness won't help me, and if I, tell people it will, it's a lie, it's fake, it's made up, it's not real, it's got no grace. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I, Jesus, will give you rest. That's the source. Everything else is made up, and all the made up stuff can't help you. And we live in a world today where we need concrete, real, solid help for real, concrete, solid people who have real, concrete, solid problems. And the solution is not an imaginary friend or a made-up spirituality by some guru off somewhere who I don't, I don't care what he's taught or written. It makes no difference to me. Jesus Christ is the solution. Jesus Christ is the answer. And so if we don't present the faith that our forefathers have lived and died for to them, we do them a disservice. And so we should be really convinced and convicted that Jesus is the answer, that Jesus is enough as the apostles were, as St. Paul was, as St. Titus was, as St. Timothy was. So what we have is, is, our, is our greatest treasure here. And it's often misunderstood, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's, we don't always know exactly uh, how to put the faith across. And, and I think in recent generations as well, we've been maybe afraid that if we put our faith across too convincingly, that we might come across as triumphalist, or we might come across as closed to other faiths. If I in front of you who will be married one day, love your wife and love your wife above every other woman, does that mean you disrespect or hate every other woman who's not your wife? Of course not. You just, you love your wife. You are, should you love your wife? Please do. <laughs> please do. And please love her above every other woman, which doesn't mean in any way that you disrespect or hate or spit at every woman who's not your wife. Of course not. But she is your wife and you are allowed and you should treasure her above all others because she's your wife. We are allowed love and treasure our faith above every other, which doesn't mean that we disrespect everyone else. Of course not. Of course not. 
But we can and should believe that our faith makes a difference, that our Catholic faith, which isn't made up by gurus or, or, or spiritual leaders, it's given to us by God. We should and can, have, we must believe that this is the way to true peace, that this is the way to heaven. And so we ask the Lord today on the feast of Saints Timothy and Saint Titus in this week of which we remember and pray for our Catholic schools throughout the country. We pray for the renewal of the faith. We pray for the renewal of all hearts in love for Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.